Tecca for a smarter you. All right, well, welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Tech Hub, your one-stop platform for all things tech in Africa. I've got Pearly Mwesigwe, and she is a former policy manager at TikTok. We'll be talking different issues as a woman in technology, um, her journey to where she is, uh, to where she got to where she is today, um, the challenges, the opportunities that women have in the tech uh, ecosystem, uh, as well as some issues around policy uh, that people like you and me would always miss the lawyer for so hello pearl thank you so much for joining us and take up Let, let's talk about you know how you got to where you are today honestly so to be honest like sometimes i wake up and i'm like i don't know how i did this but um i definitely think the first thing that comes to mind is resilience and just having a very big goal um i'm a lawyer by background and i've always wanted to work as a lawyer i was just interested in justice human rights how do I you know, help other people? My, my dad is a lawyer as well. So I was just like, okay, I want to do this. So I studied at the University of Lagos and you know, asked all my colleagues. I did a lot of human rights work. I did Model UN and you know, I was like, I'm going to be Secretary General of the United Nations. That was my goal. As, like, that was just, you know, I was taking different things, courses, different things just to get me to that place. But then I had to do my master's in California. So I got into UC Berkeley. And UC Berkeley is definitely that human rights plus technology because it's Silicon Valley, but it have a lot of history in civil rights. So when I got into that space, I was like, okay, I'm going to do my master's in human rights. Um, and then I got into this project like AI and child's rights. And I was like, human rights and technology, how? Like, I've never seen it being played out. Like, what is, you know, back then technology was just coming out. Anyways, I took that project and then it just, you know, it changed my life because I, I, I saw that impact of like human rights and technology. So, you know, from there I started like researching, trying to understand, okay, what is this? And it turns out human rights and technology equals to tech policy, right? So that's what a lot of companies are now talking about these days, tech policy, user rights, online rights. And um, fast forward two years after interviewing, getting rejected a lot of times, I just want to be clear because it didn't happen overnight. Um, you know, eventually I got this job to be the policy manager um, for Sub-Saharan Africa at TikTok. What does that job entail? Then? So when I used to work at TikTok, because, you know, <laughs> my, my past life now. Um, so basically, day to day was definitely, you know, understanding the ecosystem. How do people interact with our platforms, um, you know, First of all, like just this is how they use our platform. They use it for comedies. We see a lot of sports. And then every now and then we get, you know, things that have gone wrong. For example, maybe a challenge that went wrong. Um, you know, so how do we tackle those? We definitely want people to feel safe on our platform. We don't want a situation where, oh, I don't use TikTok because I saw XYZ on the platform. So I guess my day to day is just definitely, you know, doing that research. I have a whole team of people who tells me, oh, we saw this online. We saw this on TikTok. How do we, you know, what is the policy guidance? Because we do have a community guidelines that, you know, tell you, you can't post this, you can't post that. So if somebody now goes ahead to post that, then it's my job to say, okay, well, based on our community guidelines, this might have to be taken down. Or, you know, for every rule, there are, there are exceptions. Our community guidelines do provide exceptions. So, you know, in matters of, let's say, you know, counter speech, you know, you're trying to give light to certain situations, maybe doing protests or doing an uprising um, or speaking against a particular government, there are certain times where we would give exceptions to, um, you know, certain posts that are put up on our platform. I want to go to the issue of data protection of my data whatever platform it is that i use on social media right on, on online and whatever social media platform i use i'm giving my data out every single day yes. every single day and i got to understand somehow listening to uh, the founder of tiktok that there are um what's it called machine learning recommendations that mm -hmm. help to you know uh, cater to the uh to what people the preferences of people yeah i mean that gets me concerned well, to be honest, um, you know, all social media companies, you know, including TikTok, um, our motto really is just to give people the best time online. You know, like, for example, at TikTok, um, our goal was definitely to inspire creativity and bring joy. So we like, you know, TikTok having machine learning algorithms is just so that we you have a personalized, you know, experience when you come on the platform so yes you know there are concerns of okay this is data exploitation what does that look like but you know if you sign up to TikTok, if you sign up to twitter if you sign up to facebook any of this platform you've kind of you know agreed to this data being um wow. you know, used basically so is that the terms of services wow. right so it's it, those kind of comments because until you sign up for that until you say yes 
then there's no way you can have like a personalized feed. And obviously, like, you know, they are the down parts of this, you know, situation that we find ourselves in. But looking at it from a company perspective, this is our way of giving you a personalized, okay, you love comedy. You come on these platforms, all you see is comedy, right? But, but, the rest, but, but, yeah. but, but you know, that was the big issue before. Yeah you know advocates began to stand up and speak yeah. if that didn't happen probably the exploitation would have gone on and on correct and that's why you know as private companies we all need checks and balances Absolutely. just like the government like you know governments they have their own checks and balances they have legislature so you know thanks thanks to ngos like we're able to have our own checks and balances right ngos have told us okay this is not correct this is what we need to do and just what you had mentioned there are new laws coming in place right now you know making sure that you know, companies are no longer doing these personalized feeds. Like, you know, we users need to know what their data is are being used for. We need a detailed description. Okay, this is what my data is being used for. So I know, you know, in the beginning there were no reg regulations for social media company, but thank God now there are more regulations. Like we're learning from our mistakes and we're just like, you know, moving forward. Very recently in Nigeria, in fact, just last week there was a sad incident that happened where um, a college girl, you know, was mauled. I don't really like talking about it because it's really it's really a sad one. Yeah, she yes. met her death in such a horrible way, and the video was posted mm -hmm. on social media. Yes, whichever social media was the first one, I don't know. But mm -hmm. as a policy manager, as a lawyer, what would you advise, you know, companies to do? If you look at all social media platforms, we do have community guidelines. Um, you know, official platform rules that you know regulate certain things that you can post and don't. And videos like that definitely fall under our violence and graphic, you know, buckets. So it's violence, it's graphic, it shouldn't be on a platform. Again, just like I, like I told you earlier, we do have exceptions. So because, you know, there, there are certain times where we're like, okay, this could be, you know, their way of creating awareness so that people can see. Now, rest assured, this video should not have been on any of these platforms um, because these you know, the platform rules do not allow for it. It's supposed to be reported. So let's say you were the one reporting the news, maybe certain clips of it would have been shown, but putting up a full video of it is definitely harmful to a lot of, you know, communities that would see it. So a lot of companies, um, you know, would definitely put up sensitive filters. So Twitter, for example, these type of videos would definitely have a sensitive filter saying, you're about to watch this graphic warning. Absolutely. Right? So that's, that's another thing that we put in place because we also run the risk of if we take down these videos, there are some people who would be offended. Like, let the world see what happens in Nigeria. Thank, Thank you so, so much, Pearly. Wezigwe. Wezigwe, yes, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> For this conversation. All right, guys, you've heard it from Pearly. That was a beautiful one. Let's go on a short break. And when we come back, there is more for you and Tech Hub. Stay with us. Tech Hub. For a smarter you.